Today, I'm going to help you win more League of Legends games. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you read the title. This year, I hit Grandmaster with a pretty solid win rate, posted some nice scores on a multitude of champions and styles, dropped some nukes for fun, TACTICAL NUKE INCOMING! Used some unique pocket picks like Lilia Mid to get some cool solo kills, OH MY- <laughs> And even had a few good smurf account win rates playing every role in the game. Although I will say I really want to do a support only account soon. But you know, the purpose of me showing you this is not to inflate my ego. It's not for me to tell you that I think I'm the perfect player and that I never make mistakes. I'm not competing for rank one challenger, and I'm certainly not a pro. I can get better, I can improve, and I do make mistakes while playing this game. And that's okay. I play this game for fun, because I enjoy it, and I want to be the change that I want to see in the world and in the community. I really want to improve. I want to reach my potential, practice more, try harder, and do better. And in the process of doing that, I also want to help others and give advice where I can, helping lower elo players, and trying to be an actual bastion of help and progress in the community while also not being toxic. After this video goes live, I'm going to be streaming on my Twitch, and it will be a non-toxic, informative stream where I genuinely care about answering your questions, I care about helping the community at large, and I will not be flaming my teammates. I will be playing with the chat full muted, and I will just be trying my best to win, regardless of the circumstances. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then please, feel free to check out my stream. This video is meant to help you in the most genuine and honest way possible, but the only way that I can do that is if you understand something outright. Improvement is a mindset, and if you don't have an improvement mindset, you cannot get better. Assuming you actually play the game and do play ranked, if you're at a 50% win rate, then you're exactly where you belong. Elo Hell has never and will never exist over a large enough sample size. But a good question you might have then is why is it so hard? Let's say you understand that you need to improve, but you're struggling to do so. Why is that? The truth is that League of Legends is one of the most complicated video games ever made. It is equal parts mechanics with keyboard and mouse dexterity, also known as hands in the community, combined with chess levels of strategy and quick decision making, aka game knowledge and macro. Nobody, and I mean nobody, has ever improved at this game quickly. It is a long and difficult process, and the only times where somebody has reached Challenger in some kind of extremely fast circumstance is when they already had previous experience, either with MOBAs or RTSs. If, for example, League of Legends was your first ever PC game, you're gonna have to spend the first couple of years playing just learning how to click the mouse correctly, and that takes a ton of time. On top of that, this game changes so much from patch to patch that it is incredibly difficult to keep up. And again, the community doesn't help either. From ARAM casuals to even other content creators and pro players, it feels like everybody is toxic and is always mad playing this game. But trust me, it does not have to be this way. You can improve. You can learn. You can play without tilting. And I am hoping to make that a little easier for you today. I have divided this video and the tips into sections. General info, laning, jungling, and mental. I promise you, if you watch to the end, you will take away something of value, something that will help you get better. Keep in mind though that these tips are not all weighted equally. They range from extremely basic stuff that only a new player wouldn't understand, to things that might even help high-low players. So let's start with some of the general tips. A mistake that is all too common over the years is cookie cutter builds and runes, and that is understandable. It is really hard to keep up with this stuff as a casual player, and it's incredibly complicated. But look, if you don't respect runes and items and how important they are to understand, then that is already a red flag. I'm not saying it should be this way. League is complicated enough as it is with 160 plus champions, but the truth is that your runes are insanely important. So in order to help, here's what I've done. I've compiled a list of a couple of rules that I would live by. It's not perfect, it's not 100% set in stone, because nothing in this video game ever will be, but this is as close to a list of guaranteed rules that this game will ever see, and it's a good starting point for general knowledge. If you're a melee champion against a heavy poke lane, and you don't take Doran Shield's second wind, you're trolling. Again, maybe the game shouldn't be balanced like this, but you just have to take these. Another big one. 
Mercury Treads, Legend Tenacity, and Unflinching have to be thought of against Heavy CC. If I'm playing versus a comp that has Lissandra and Rel, and I don't have Tenacity, the game feels almost impossible. Most of the time, the ADC needs to pay attention and should look to see if they have to pay the cleanse tax against Ash or other CC champs like Varus. The difference between having cleanse and not most of the time will be the deciding factor in the lane. More or less, you should now always start Doran's items. This is a pretty recent thing after Riot buffed them. You used to be able to start things like Call or Longsword 3 or Boots 4 Pot, and while it's true that I still do see some people not use this, sometimes I still see people start Dark Seal on Mages and stuff like that, it's a little bit harder to get away with this now, and if you're starting a Doran's item, you're at least in the right direction. Speaking of laning power, Tier 2 boots early are very strong. With a few exceptions being like Heimer or Yumi, you will almost always see Korean challengers rush boots first item because the movement speed helps to dodge skill shots, avoid ganks, chase people down, and the actual raw stats and passives on them are insane. If you are consistently finishing your first item on all of your champs before completing tier 2 boots, you should really consider changing that. See if higher level players on those champs are getting boots faster than you do. This sounds really simple, but the amount of people who don't pay enough attention to the enemy team comp and champ select, and if they have Zed, Talon, Fizz, or any number of assassins, you should definitely take exhaust. Three different roles can take exhaust typically in any team with it being mid ADC and support, so try to coordinate that. If you play tank supports and you're not perma abusing hex flash, you're definitely doing something wrong. Watch some challenger replays and pay attention to how broken it is on engage supports. You should be ganking from creative angles and look for plays with it. Bone plating is a must in volatile matchups, especially in the top lane. Fiora, Renekton, Riven, Darius, Yone, these types of bruisers in the top lane are going to take bone plating, try to trade early and often, and create advantages. These lanes typically come down to who gets the first kill, and then the lane is over for the other champ, so you should be playing around bone plating and its cooldown just as much as you would the enemy champ's actual abilities. It really is that strong. You need to pay attention to it. That does it for some of the more basic rules in terms of runes and items, but in order to learn more, I highly suggest using websites to help you. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, just use your preference. My preference is u.gg, but that's fine if you don't want to use it. League of Graphs is pretty good, Lolytics, all that stuff. Every single day of my life, I am sorting through rune and build choices for the champions that I like to play, just trying to learn more. If a pro ends up using a certain build, I will always try it because how can I pretend that I would know everything? Always seek out more information when it comes to this game. Now let's talk about how you actually win League of Legends games. I know that sounds stupid, but let me be serious for a moment. How do you actually win. The biggest macro mistake that lower rated players are making in their games is that they disregard the importance of objectives. Objectives are how you win games. Tarzan has talked about this a lot on his stream and with the recent buffs to Bran jungle while he was in Korea, he mentioned that Bran was one of the reasons that he was winning so many games just because of his objective control being so strong. Guys, it matters if the enemy stacks dragons, it matters if the enemy gets barren, it matters if you lose the soul. The stats and power that come from the objectives should be your first priority. Show up to the objectives early, make sure you look for picks, contest vision, and please help your support ward. In a similar boat, Low Elo is absolutely terrified and scared to take Baron, and I genuinely have no idea why. I am not sure where this started or why this is the case, because players will watch pro play and see that T1 will straight up flip the Nash right as it spawns at 20 minutes with nobody dead and play to win the entire game right then and there, yet after killing 4 members 40 minutes into the game, including the jungler, will now decide this is the best time to go take Gromp. Joking aside, guys, the order of importance in this game is Baron, then the towers. If you get a chance to get Baron, whether you kill several members of the enemy team, or even if you just kill the jungler, all five of you should go straight there if you can. Don't recall unless you absolutely have to. Now is not the time to go full clear your jungle camps. You don't need the siege mid, go take Baron. You use the Baron to siege, that's why we get it. The next thing I want to talk about is agency, and this is something that will be both a little disheartening, but also potentially a bit relieving to hear at the same time. There are champions in solo queue with more agency than others. There really are champions who are better for smurfing and better for 1v9ing. Let me explain. Champions like these are just better at carrying solo queue games than Jinx or Sivir. 
they just are. Now hang on, before you take this too far and before you think this means you can't climb because you don't play Rengar, that's not true. All I'm trying to say is that when I see a Rengar, a Draven, Hecarim, or Silas player with an insane 90% plus win rate smurf account, while it's true that they're still a very good player and playing these champions takes a ton of skill, yes, it wouldn't be nearly as surprising to me as finding an account of somebody who plays Sivir only with no duo partner. A champion like Sivir needs a team. Sivir's strength is through wave clear and safe laning, but she does not have the individual 1v9 potential that Draven does. A Draven player will likely almost always have a better win rate than a Sivir player, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible to climb. Somebody, at one point or another, has reached challenger on every single champ in the game, sometimes with even super weird playstyles. No champion is impossible to climb with. Draven, Rangar, Hecarim, and champions like these are just particularly good at carrying solo queue games. So if you do play a lower agency champion, or if you do play a champ who is objectively weak right now, like Zeri is, just understand that you're not going to have as strong of a win rate overall, and that's okay. At the end of the day, if playing Zeri makes you happy, if you think she's fun, then play Zeri. It's a video game, and video games are meant to be fun. Sure, winning is fun, I get that, but life moves on. You can go touch grass. Your solo queue win rate does not have to define your entire self-worth, even if your ranked teammates want to type it to you every game. Just remember that it quite literally does not matter if you're 1k games hard stuck gold. As long as you have a good attitude and you're an honorable player, play whatever you want. It's just a game and you can always improve. Another mistake that might be holding you back is simply not soaking in enough information, and it's totally understandable because it's really hard to do that mechanically. The reason that challenger players constantly unlock their screen, watch around the map, Faker is spamming those F keys, and gathering in so much additional information is because they've played thousands and thousands of games on their champ. Think about someone like Pizang, for example, the Korean challenger, Yasuo, and Yon player. This guy only plays these two champs. I mean, literally only these champs. So in total, he probably has over 30,000 matches of them. So of course, when he's playing, he can focus on what actually matters. Watching the map, learning about the game state, making sure he's not dying to ganks, farming perfectly, all that good stuff. It's kind of like when I play Yasuo, I will still make tons of mistakes even if I have some practice on them and I've played 500 or more games all time, that's not really enough to know what to do under all circumstances all the time that the game can throw at me. I'll make mistakes, I'm only human, and I'm nowhere near as good as Pizang and never will be. To achieve the level of skill that this guy has on the champ is just unfounded, it's unfathomable, it requires dedicating your entire life to this craft. When someone is that mechanically comfortable on a champion, it allows them to improve at every other aspect of the game and learn what truly matters in winning games. This is why for years you've heard that the best strategy to climb is to one trick on an easy champion, and that could not be more true. Every single high level player is constantly looking around the map, making split second decisions with all of the information that the game is giving them, and the only way you're able to do that is by being so comfortable on the champion that you're not even thinking about the buttons, you're not even thinking about the mechanics. That should be a given. Laning is the part of the game that shows an immense amount of skill, and it's very tough to be good in lane. You have to absolutely master the matchups, dodge the jungle ganks, and it's so hard to focus on all these things at once, but here's some general tips that I can give you. It is highly likely that you're using far too many spells in the early game on the wave when you should be using it on champions. At high levels of play, you'll see both players understand that in order to create an advantage in their lane, they have to trade. A health advantage is what allows you to win, and I think the most obvious example of this would be on a champion like Syndra. If you watch any high level Syndra player, each of their first 4 or 5 Qs that she uses during the laning phase will always be used on the enemy champion, not the minions. Creating a trading advantage means that you'll hit your level spikes quicker, and levels are everything in this game. You can potentially zone your opponent off of CS and XP, so even if you miss 1-2 to two minions for it, it's definitely worth it. If you're struggling to get last hits without your spells, then the only thing that I can tell you is that you have to practice. A lot. It's really difficult to be successful in this game if you can't last hit under tower, and if you can't last hit with your autos. You cannot rely purely on spells to secure last hits, because then you never have anything up to trade. When it comes to farming, here is the hard truth that really hurts to hear and admit, but ultimately if you keep this in the back of your mind when you play this game, it will help you improve. 
every single CS that you miss that is uncontested is by definition a mistake. And until you never miss minions ever again, you could always be improving as a player. Humble yourself and your gameplay by pushing yourself to do better. Be mad when you miss a cannon minion. Be upset every time you miss three last hits in a row and work on fixing it because it absolutely matters. One of the best ways to improve at a champion is by watching specific matchups. Anytime you want to learn a new champ, you need to see how a good player uses their spells and how they use their rotation. Something that I do every day of my life is go to the League of Graphs website and download ranked replays from Korean Challenger and watch the VODs. What I'm looking for in specific is how guys like Zeka, Faker, and Chovy are playing out their matchups in the mid lane. But you could do this with anybody. If you're an ADC main, there's tons of videos here on YouTube of high level Chinese ADCs and their stream highlights and gameplay. In order to gain an advantage, you need to understand your opponent's cooldowns. A great example of this is this solo kill by Zookill. LOL Dobby did a great breakdown of his gameplay, and in this clip, he knows that his E is a shorter cooldown than Akali's Shroud by a small margin, and he uses that to kill her. Have you ever been killed in this game and one of your critical cooldowns was up in one second and you called that unlucky? Technically speaking, maybe it wasn't unlucky at all. Maybe the enemy player was good and actually played around that. You can study each champion's specific ability cooldowns using the wiki, and I highly recommend learning and subconsciously thinking about what cooldowns everybody has available. Every challenger player has a rough idea of every cooldown in the game because they've played tens of thousands of matches and have memorized it. Something else you need to learn is that even in matchups that you win, if they have an item that counters you or they're up in experience, they are much stronger than you. Levels and items are everything in League of Legends, and they are far more important than a champion's abilities themselves. This is why you'll watch a high-level streamer get a little bit tilted every time they miss a single minion wave or if the enemy stacks some resistances against their type of champ, because good players will know how much that matters. If I'm playing Trindamir, there is a huge difference between fighting somebody who has tabbies and somebody who doesn't. Even if somebody is low and looks like a free kill, if at any time the enemy is two or three levels up on you, they are essentially a raid boss and need to be treated that way. Levels are thousands and thousands of gold worth of stats, and a lot of abilities in the game even have their effectiveness ramp up with levels as well. Take for example Ari's Charm. An Ari that is higher level than you is going to have a few more points in charm potentially, meaning that you'll get CC'd for longer if she hits it. This is why levels matter so much. On all of the champions that you play, you have to learn how to wave clear properly. If you take a Kali for example, if you don't take the time to learn how to line up your Q on the minion wave, then that is a huge mistake and you're playing her incorrectly. If you play Silas and you're not lining up your Q to hit the melees and the casters and then using the passive to auto the cannon minion to clear the wave faster, then you're playing Silas wrong. If you're wasting needless amounts of mana, cooldowns, and time by wave clearing incorrectly, then you are at a massive disadvantage. Forget fancy combos in the practice tool. Forget items and runes. None of those things are more important than learning how to wave clear correctly, so spend the time to learn how to do it efficiently on the champions that you play. As a laner, you need to think about jungle timings like getting ganked at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. More or less, all of the viable meta junglers will finish full clearing at 3.30, so if you haven't seen the jungler yet on the map and you can infer where they started based on who leashed, you know the only thing the jungler can do during that time is gank on the opposite side of the map. All of their camps are gone, so if they're able to get a successful gank on you during this time, the chances are likely that you just made a stupid mistake because this is when it's very obvious. Don't die to it. Jungling is the single highest impact role in the game, but it comes at the cost of being very frustrating to play and the most mentally taxing. If you don't understand waves, which lanes are gankable, and if you're constantly full clearing without watching the lane states, then you are not jungling. You're just a spectator. If you can't clear your jungle efficiently, then you need to keep improving because every second as a jungler counts. You should practice a little bit every day. You can't be actively looking at your character jungling and watching yourself use the abilities because then you're not soaking in any information on your screen. You will see that all high level junglers gank early and gank often. The idea is that you want to start with a lead and then use that advantage to bleed out your opponent and force plays in the enemy jungle. I see a lot of lower rated players make the mistake of thinking that jungle during the early game is formulaic. They come up with a plan like, I'm going to farm here, clear then, and then I'll gank bot, and then I'll reset, and then go here, and then gank here, etc. 
What makes jungle so difficult to learn is that you can't think like this. You have to be able to adapt on the fly and understand so much more about League of Legends than a lot of the other roles. In this game, you don't want to hard farm early unless it's a very specific type of game state such as playing Hecarim or Karthus, and clearly none of your lanes are gankable. You want to start out the game strong and give a few camps if you can gank, because then with the lead you can cycle perfectly and farm quickly. If bot lane is ever gankable during the early parts of the game, you better believe a Korean jungler is going straight there. They're not even going to finish their camp first. If they can get a kill, they will. Once again, Dobby has a great video showing Canyon this time in an absolutely perfect situation to explain what I mean about understanding the lane states. The best junglers in the world know how to find ganks all over the map and keep up great tempo because they know how laning phase actually works. In this example, the Gnar really needs to shove out this terrible lane state. Both him and the Gragas are low, so Gnar needs to look to push out and recall because the idea is that a good player knows he can't really just sit here on 1 HP and no punishment is going to come. The jungle role exists and we have to respect it. Even if Nar dies solo to this Gragas, if he can push out the whole wave into the turret, the following waves will come back to him and he won't lose any farm. Canyon is looking all over the map and looking at the lanes while clearing his camps and realizes that the Nar's wave state is extremely screwed over and he needs to base right now. So Canyon just shows up and ruins top lane for the rest of the game. It sounds so simple when you put it like this. When I show such a good example, it makes it seem obvious, but trust me, League is a complicated video game, and the amount of ganks that a low elo player will either overforce or not even see as an opportunity because they don't move their camera around enough is costing them games. It's really hard to have good map awareness. It takes a lot of brain power and mechanics, but you can practice it. As for helping the lanes, if your laners have a frozen wave on them and they can't play the game, you need to hover for them so they can fix it. The jungler doesn't necessarily always have to either be farming or ganking. Sometimes hovering is your best bet. You don't need to think about jungle like a stealth assassin, even if you are quite literally playing a stealth assassin. It is okay if the enemy knows where you are sometimes. If you end up having to show in the top lane to help your laner fix an extremely bad lane state, that is okay. It's important to understand as a low elo player for both the laner and the jungler, this is not taxing. Nobody is taxing your wave to fix a horrible lane state like this. You would lose so much more experience in gold if the wave wasn't fixed. The final section of this video is all about mental, which is just as important as gameplay. And it's safe to say that the league community is, uh, let's just say a, a different breed. I don't know, I'm pretty sure 90% of solo queue players belong in a special facility where they can be monitored, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Either way, be the change you want to see in the world, and I am officially from this point forward making a vow to always be a good teammate, always try my best, and have a good mental. Mute all is a powerful tool, and so is the deafen function. Flaming, getting frustrated, and losing your mental helps nothing and solves nothing. If this video game ends up making you so upset that you're raging out of your mind, either take a break or don't play at all. I'm man enough to admit that I haven't been the best version of myself playing this game before, and I'm going to try really hard to bring actual positivity back into this extremely toxic game. It starts with me, and I'm going to do it. Other than just pure toxicity, let's talk about how you should approach the game from a mental standpoint as well. The best Elden Ring player is Gino Machino, and he has accomplished things in this game that nobody else is even close to matching yet. And when asked by his chat about how he does what he does, he responds with a very simple philosophy that he likes to live by. Learn first, and then win. And League is no different from this at all. You must first learn before you can win. If you are hyper-focused, fixated, and obsessed with your current LP and the result of your very next game, then you are looking at the improvement process incorrectly. You cannot get better if you're worried about the result of your next 5 games. You need to be concerned about the result of your next 100. LP will go up and LP will go down. Win streaks and lose streaks will happen, both. But what determines a good player is their success over the long term. It's about performing and consistently having a high impact over your games over the course of a whole season. In solo queue, you have to carry. If you don't win your lane or get ahead, help the team secure crucial objectives, not feed your 1k shutdown, if you miss all of your thresh hooks, if you're not a massive reason why the team is winning, then you will not win, period. 
The reality is that your team is going to feed, your team is going to make mistakes, you will play against strong champions in the meta, and none of that should be the determining factor on whether or not you climb. It is your job to perform and play well and carry the game. But you can do it. You can learn. You can improve. And even if you don't, the final thing I have to say is that as long as you're having fun and playing because you enjoy the video game for what it is, then you are winning in my book. Be 1k games hardstuck. Be an ARAM casual. Play norms with your friends. Who cares? It's a game. Enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And let me know what you thought in the comments down below.